All right. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Micah Christensen, leading setter of Modena Volley and the USA national team. Micah, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me, Daniel. Yeah, of course. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about Champions League and, and your season so far in uh, professional volleyball. So first question, great results for you guys in that first tournament, um, going 3-0 and against some pretty competitive teams in uh, Kuzbaz Kamarovo and Rissava. How did that feel? I think, yeah, it was, uh, it was, I guess, the best that we could ask for, you know, to go 3-0 and into a weekend that we didn't really know um, how it was going to go. You know, it was a lot of our, a lot of first time uh, Champions League experiences for a handful of our players. And, you know, that's always a ex super exciting uh, first experience. And we're playing against some top level competition as well. So, um, you know, one of the best teams in Belgium, one of the best teams in Poland and one of the best teams in Russia. So to be able to come out of that weekend 3-0 was a, was a huge success for us. And uh, it only has helped propel us uh, even further. And you guys have had, like you said, rely on some guys without as much experience and, and maybe some new players, you know, Tommaso, Rinaldi, uh, Luis, Elian, and some of those guys. Do you find yourself maybe a bit more taking on a leadership role this year with the team? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, you know, I was, I'm was i very honored and fortunate that they named me captain this year. So, um, I mean, there's obviously that. But I think just as a setter in general, um, you kind of have to naturally be a leader on the court. You're the guy touching the ball every every play, kind of um, constructing the offense, if you will. So so you kind of naturally are forced into a leadership role. And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate to have a handful of experience in, in Champions League. So to be able to to take that and then and use that with a lot of my other teammates as well that have had the Champions League experience to be able to go into that weekend and try to help lead and help uh, – use that experience to help the team was, uh, I think, extremely valuable. And kind of going back on your Champions League experience, do you have any memories, you know, that you can pull back on and, and, and really use in, in moments like this? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, whole, there's a whole lot of Champions League uh, memories. You know, my first three years uh, professional, I mean, we made the final four, Champions League final four every year. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a, we couldn't get a gold medal. Some, some pretty um, like, tough teams you're going against. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, I mean, obviously one of the most memorable, if not the most memorable, um, for for an unfortunate reason, is uh, losing in the final uh, to, I mean, to an incredible Zene Kazan team who and it was, you know, a, an extremely high-level volleyball match. So obviously an extremely memorable moment there. Um, there was also, I played uh, my first year in, uh, in Italy, my first professional year, we played, a golden set in uh, to get into the, the final four. So we played actually six sets of volleyball and uh, it was, um, it was a crazy experience. My first and only golden set experience and, and we, we won it. So that's, yeah, that's yeah it's not common, but when it does happen, it, it really is something exciting for the fans. And when you're playing in champions league, do you notice kind of like a, a stylistic difference when you're playing a Belgian team and then you go the next day and play a, a Russian team and then maybe, a Polish team right after. Yeah, you know, it's it's a different uh, mindset, especially when you're playing three three days in a row. Like this is an, this is an, an uh, extremely traditional Champions League uh, setup. So to be able to kind of have that experience through the national team as well, playing kind of three days in a row, three different teams um, was helpful. But, you know, when it, when it comes to group stages like this, we just try to focus on our style of volleyball, be the best, uh, modern volleyball team that we can be and then adjust to styles um, and uh, and strengths and weaknesses during the game and try to make those make those adjustments and uh, speaking maybe of the Italian league a bit more it's uh it's I think the most competitive league in the world uh, there's some really good other teams in Champions League uh, Lube Perugia Trentino and you guys have to go against them every week in uh, in your domestic league and I just want to ask how is your uh, season going this year you know, our season, it's, uh, I think it's an interesting one for everybody here in Italy. Like a lot of uh, traditionally very strong teams are uh, being surprised with uh, some tough five setters or some losses to teams that traditionally um, weren't winning those games. So um, obviously I think COVID brings a lot of those interesting surprises. And um, this, you know, this year is obviously a little different without fans. Um, 
with a little bit different protocols with the you know, traveling to away games and this and that. But overall, it's like you said, I think the most competitive league from top to bottom in the world. And so having that be our normal every weekend um, battle, it also, you know, it can only help us for when we enter the Champions League competition as well. And playing without fans, is that something that affects uh, how you play in terms of, you know, mentally or, or stylistically? You know, stylistically, no. I think, um, I think it just, it hurts us a little bit when we're at home because it doesn't hurt us, but it doesn't help us like it usually does. You know, we have one of the best home crowds I think exactly. I've, I've ever seen. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's all, that's a huge advantage for us to be able to play in front of our home crowd, to, to be able to get that extra little push uh, from our fans and even, you know, disrupt the opposing team. But, it, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're fortunate enough to be able to be playing volleyball still and um, doing it for the fans, whether it be online or on social media, however, however we can connect. Um, so we're, you know, we're trying to look at it that way. We're, we're fortunate. We're going to go out and battle, um, but we do definitely miss playing in front of fans. And you've been in Italy for a while now. Do you, do you find it kind of feels like home and you're, and you're used to everything? And I know your Italian's quite good, but do you, do you feel like you've kind of made a name for yourself here in the Italian league? Yeah, you know, this is my sixth year here in Italy. It's, uh, it's definitely become like a second home to us, to, my, to myself and my family. Um, you know, speaking the language, understanding the culture a lot more, really diving into it, I think uh, was a smart decision for, for myself and my family to, to not kind of just do the same things that we would do in America and in Hawaii, but, you know, try to um, absorb as much of the Italian culture as we could and uh, really try to, res- I don't know, I feel like I, I, you're respecting the culture and the country that you're, you're living in when you dive into it, when you give it a chance and you kind of immerse yourself. So. That was the goal, and yeah, I think we're we're very comfortable here. We uh, we, we definitely consider it a, a second home. We're fortunate to be here. Awesome. And then, okay, so a bit of a different question here, more about kind of the volleyball uh, media side of things. So, I just listened to a podcast the other day you did with the uh, Worsley brothers, uh, which I really liked. I know I've seen some Instagram lives with you and Kavika Shoji. Eric Shoji has his own YouTube channel. So there's a lot of stuff that you know athletes are doing do you think kind of athlete created content is, is the future of, of sports media I think uh, I think there's a huge demand for it I think a lot of people want to connect directly with athletes you know especially when they're at the highest level um, and that's kind of a, a door you don't get to step into uh, very often or at least in the past you haven't been able to because there hasn't been that one-to-one connection with the uh, with the athlete so as social media starts to grow, as there's different channels um, of connecting with fans, whether it be whether it be you know on your Instagram, just like posting things, or doing a, a vlog of your day, that you know yeah. you're seeing a lot more athletes do now, um, just to get an inside look on what an athlete's life is like, especially at the highest levels. Um, I do think there's some there's demand for it. I think it's an awesome thing. Um, I don't think it's for everybody. Like some people have a personality for it and some people don't. And some people right. don't, maybe not, may not have the time to do it as well. So I think uh, to each his own, but I, it, can only, it can only help the sport. And, and kind of speaking more volleyball media in general, have, have you seen the landscape change um, a lot kind of since you started uh, playing professionally or is it yeah. most of the same? Yeah. I, would, I, I, I think uh, just in terms of like media wise and, and coverage, I think. Uh, Volleyball, especially, you know, being here in Italy and having, having volleyball being one of the top sports, um, having a ton of European fans and, and backing along with like, there's a ton of like Asian fans out there, that, which is incredible. And I, yeah. think, um, I think there's a huge market there as well, demand for, you know, volleyball. And so to reach, to be able to reach uh, global fans, at a whole new level with the uh, emergence of social media and the internet and all that stuff to be able to connect with fans all over the world. Um, it's definitely like changed the landscape of how volleyball is being watched and followed and just the, uh, just the attention that the sport is getting. So it's, it's awesome. Cause I do think the more attention the sport gets, the more popular it will be because it's such an incredible 
neat. It's incredibly fun to watch. It's dynamic. It's physical. So I think the more people, more eyes you get on it, the better. Well, sport is kind of a uh, an international language, just overall. And um, you know, some viral videos. Maybe maybe viral is a strong word, but you've been in some fun videos playing uh, basketball recently. Can oh, yeah. I, I'm just I'm curious what what is your uh, background with uh with that sport? Oh, so I, I grew up playing basketball. I mean, basketball was my first sport uh, up until basically I finished high school. Um, and I decided to take volleyball 100% uh, for long because I kind of saw the end goal to, to be in the Olympics. And that was my goal as a, as a volleyball player. And I, I was kind of in the USA pipeline to be able to arrive there, you know, kind of if I continue to take those steps, um, there's a possibility that I could go to the Olympics. So I, I chose volleyball to pursue full-time in college, uh, but basketball has always been a love of mine. I've, I st it still is. I love playing it. I, I miss playing it. Um, but I was a pretty successful high school, um, college basketball or high school basketball player. And I had some opportunities to go to college as well, but um, we chose volleyball and I think, it, and, and I'm very excited and happy with the choice. Okay. And last question before I let you go here, dunk contest between all the players on Modena. Are you winning or is there another guy who you oh, think I'm could? Winning uh, I'm winning that for sure. You winning that? USA uh, team. Uh, USA team, it might be a little different. So who, who, who would win on the USA team then? Oh, man. Um, I think you got to throw Taylor Sander in there because he's a, just a flyer. Yeah. There's a, you know, there's just more of like a, a bit more of a basketball culture in America. Like most volleyball players have played a little bit of basketball. And so in my experience here in Italy, um, in Europe, like most volleyball players have played soccer. So, right. um, and, or specialized in volleyball. So I think I have the edge simply because there hasn't been a lot of exposure to basketball here in Modena, but I think it'd be a, a, a very competitive one in the, the USA gym. Could be some good content. Yeah, there you go, content idea. All right, Micah, thank you for joining us today and uh, great good luck with the uh, Champions League tournament. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Daniel. Thanks.